Parental controls. Today's kids are growing up faster than ever before, with a variety of content on TV, billboards, magazines, and of course the internet that often isn't suitable for a young mind to comprehend. As parents, we need to be sure that kids can stay kids without being subjected to material which can affect them in a negative way. Also, especially where the internet is concerned, not only do we have to ensure that our kids aren't being subjected to unsavoury material, but we also have to watch out for people that might otherwise take advantage of them. In Windows Vista, parents can rejoice in the fact that Microsoft has taken the step of introducing parental controls that can help you, the parent, lock down certain aspects of your computer to help the kids remain in a safe environment and to also safeguard the PC itself so kids aren't accidentally downloading files to the computer that might otherwise harm it. Now, in my personal opinion, this is one of the great new features of Windows Vista, as in simple terms, it allows you to restrict what people are able to do on your computer and to log records of what they're doing. Now, there was a bit of an outcry regarding this feature of Vista, as it definitely rubbed right to privacy advocates the wrong way. But for those of you with young children, you'll most likely appreciate what Microsoft has done here. But in order to even utilize the parental controls, your version of Windows Vista must be one of these three versions, either of the home versions or the Windows Vista Ultimate Edition. OK, so let's get started. So we'll come down here, we'll click on Start and we'll open up the control panel. And up here in the top right corner, we can set up our parental controls. Now, a little gotcha here before we get too far ahead in this video. If you've joined your Vista machine to a domain, then this control panel applet here will disappear and you won't be able to use parental controls. However, if we go back and click on start again, and we'll simply type in gpedit.msc and we'll hit enter. And this will fire up the local policy editor. So under our computer configuration here, we'll expand administrative templates then Windows Components, and we'll select Parental Controls. Now over here in the right hand side of our console, we can choose to make the parental controls visible from the control panel when we're on a domain. So in case you're wondering how to get it back, this is how you do it. Simply right click on this policy, select Properties, and then change this to Enabled. Then just click on OK, and you'll need to restart your computer. All right, well, we'll close this and we'll choose here to set up parental controls for any user. Now, even though it does actually say any user, the truth is it's any user except the administrator accounts. Now, as evidenced by this little shield icon here, this will invoke user account control. So we'll click continue. All right, now, since I don't have another user account created on this computer, the first thing I'm going to have to do is to create one. So I'm going to click this link here to create a new user account. And we'll give this account a name. So I'm just going to call this user Jack. And we'll leave it so Jack has to set his password when he first logs on. And we'll simply click on the create account button. Okay, so by default here we can see that parental controls is disabled. So we'll check the first radio button here and enable it for Jack's account. Now, bear in mind, if you go and create another user account, say for Jill, then her account won't be configured with parental control. So you'll need to go and add her account in separately. All right, well, next we have an option of creating a log of what Jack's doing on this computer, if you like. But if you're one of those right to privacy advocates I mentioned a moment ago, you might still like to be able to use parental controls to limit what someone can do on this computer, but not log what they're trying to do or where they're trying to go. So that's up to you. But I'll just leave logging on for the moment. All right, now down the left hand side here, we can control what Jack can do as far as his web activity, what times he can use the computer, the games he can play, and what programs he's able to run. So we'll click on the top one, the Windows Vista web filter. And here we can decide what parts of the web that Jack can visit. Now the default is to block some websites and the decision to block them 
is based on this web restriction level set in the middle here, which is currently set to medium, which as you can see by this description in the middle, will block websites that consist of pornography, drugs, hate speech, and weapons. But we could certainly change this to high, and that will block all websites unless they've been approved for children. We could of course set it to none, which won't block anything, or custom, and then we can choose the specific items that we wish to block. Now even though this is a pretty good list here, this service won't be 100% accurate since it's impossible for Microsoft to police every site out there on the internet. So with that in mind, we can choose to edit the allow and block list. And in here, we can enter in URLs that would either like to allow or block. So I could enter in, say, Disney.com, and I could choose to allow that website, as that's quite suitable for Young Jack. And I could enter in UFC.com, and I could choose to block that one, since I don't want Jack watching violent sports. And my apologies for any UFC fans, I'm only using this one as an example. Now down the bottom here, I can also choose to allow Jack to only access websites that are explicitly defined in the allow list here if I like. And that's fine, but you will run into a couple of gotchas here. Because you're going to have to sit there and potentially type in hundreds of URLs specifically so that Jack can access them. Or you're going to have him come to you and update this list every time there's a new site he wants to visit. But of course, you might want to be really selective and only allow Jack access to Disney.com in this example. Now sure, Jack's not going to have a terrific variety of sites to choose from, but at least you know where he's going. Now finally down the bottom here, I can export this list if I want. And we'll just give this a name of test and we'll click save. So if we go and click on start and we'll open up our documents folder. And there's our test file. And if we right click on that and select properties, you can see it's got this rather odd file extension of web allow block list. But it's only a text file, so if we go and right click on it again, and we'll choose to open it up with, we'll click browse. We'll go to our C drive here, and we'll just type in notepad. And there you go, we can see that this is in fact really only a text file. So you can easily modify this file if you like. Or if you move computers or something, you could easily go back into the parental controls and then you could choose to import this file using the import option you see here. And that'll save you the pain of having to enter in all these URLs again. All right, well, we'll click on OK here. And down the bottom here, we could also block Jack's ability to download files from the internet as well. And if you're dealing with children, this isn't a bad idea, as often they don't have the same understanding of the dangers of dealing with files that could easily be Trojans in disguise or virus-infected files, so we could prevent Jack from downloading anything, and he'll have to come to us if he wants a specific file. All right, well, we'll click on OK. Now, the next option that we have here is to set time limits that will allow Jack to log on and use this computer. Now, by default, Jack can log on at any time, as evidenced by all of these white squares here. White meaning he's allowed to log on, and blue meaning he's blocked. So if we wanted to prevent Jack from logging onto this computer after, say, 8 o'clock, as we'll say that that's Jack's bedtime, we can simply click and drag the mouse over a block of time. It'll turn blue, as you can see, and Jack will no longer be able to log on during this time. Now, by the way, in case you're wondering, if Jack is already logged on during these times where we can see the white squares or the allowed times, and the time ticks over to 8 p.m., then he'll automatically be logged out. But he will get a little balloon pop-up warning ahead of time telling him that he's going to be logged off at 8 o'clock. Okay, the next option we have here is games, so we'll click on that. And the first thing that we're asked is Jack allowed to play games? Well, the default is yes, but if you click no, then that's it for Jack. Now, next we can set ratings for the games that will allow Jack to play. 
So the default is to allow Jack to play games that don't have any rating, or we could choose to block them. Now beneath this, we can set up to what rating will allow Jack to play. And this uses the ratings that are defined by the Entertainment Software Rating Board, which most games in the US support. Now if we do scroll down here, we can see that this does default to adults only, and that's probably not going to be suitable for young Jack. So we'll change this to a lower rating that has more restrictions of what Jack can play. So if I scroll up, I'm going to change this one to set to everyone, as this category is designed for kids ages six and older. And you will also note that all rating categories that are appropriate for a younger age than this will also be selected and you can see that the early childhood rating has been highlighted as well in blue. So go and have a read through these ratings when you're setting your own and you'll easily identify which one best suits your purposes. Okay now if we scroll down a little bit further we could also choose to block games even if they do pass through our rating but they contain any of these categories that we choose. So again, just run through this list and take a look. Now, once you've made your selections, simply click on OK. And now we can see that our rating here for Jack has changed. Now, we also have the option of blocking or allowing Jack to play other Windows games of our own choice. And down this list, you'll see the games that come in built with Windows. And over here you can see this letter E here indicating that these games all fall under the everyone category. So technically Jack will be able to run these games as the default here is to base Jack's ability to run them on the user rating setting which we set to everyone a moment ago. Now that is of course unless we choose to block any games here. So let's block Jack from being able to play Solitaire. All right, well we'll click on OK. And we'll click on OK again. Now, as an aside, we only had the choice to use the ESRB rating system for rating our games. And whilst in the majority of cases, it'll probably represent the best choice, in other countries, there are different companies that produce these rating systems. So if we come back at the top here and click on Parental Controls, over on the left here, we can select a game's rating system that we want to use. And depending where you are in the world, you may find one of these other ones more appropriate. Now our other option here on the left hand side of our console is for family options. And if we click this, we can set a reminder to tell us, the administrator, to go and read the activity reports. And we can also reset the web content filter as well if we like. Okay. Well, we'll go and select Jack's account again. And our final option down here is to control access to specific programs. And as far as I'm concerned, this setting is missing one important option. Jack can either use all programs or only ones that I specify. But what I would have liked to have seen is another option here so that I could make Jack use all programs except ones that I explicitly block. And hopefully we'll see that changed in a further patch for Vista. Okay, so if we don't want Jack to use all programs, we'll select the second radio button here. And as you can see, this populates a box below with a heap of programs that come with Vista. And if the one that you're looking for isn't here, you can't locate it in the list, simply click on the Browse button and then locate the executable for the program. So simply place a check in the box next to the application that you want to allow Jack to run, and that's it. It's really pretty easy, and it was obviously made for parents since most of them should be able to understand this sort of stuff. All right, well, I'm going to click Cancel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video, and I'm going to log on with Jack's account so we can generate a little bit of activity for our log. Okay, now I've just logged on to this computer here using Jack's account. So we're going to click on Start and we'll launch Internet Explorer. And by the way, notice down here 
on the uh, system tray, we've got this little icon, and that's an indication to Jack that his account does have parental controls on. And if we right click on it and choose view parental control settings, then Jack will be able to see exactly what settings that he's allowed and denied. And we can also see if we're having this information logged, which is probably going to prevent the smart player from doing things that might otherwise get them in trouble. Now, Jack can't change anything here or view any of the activity reports, but he is able to have a bit of a look around and that's pretty much all. All right, well, let's close this window. And in IE, in fact, we can see here some content on our MSN homepage has been blocked. And that's likely to be this advertisement here. But we'll go and navigate to a couple of other websites. Let's say google.com. We'll open that one up. And I'm just going to open up another tab here. And I'm going to go to yahoo.com. And we'll open up one more. And this time we'll go to guns.com. Now, selecting through our tabs here, we can see that Google and Yahoo both loaded up fine, but guns.com didn't, as it was blocked by the parental controls, presumably because it falls into the weapons category. Now, from here, Jack doesn't have the ability to view this website. He can, however, ask an administrator for permission. And if we click this link, then you'll need to enter in the administrator password in order to load the site. Now, if I happen to be sitting here when Jack attempts to access this site, then I can enter in my administrator password here, and I'll just type that in, and we'll click on OK. And then we'll get an option to either allow all content from this website or to keep blocking it. So I'm just going to say we'll keep blocking it. Now, also recall that we blocked Jack from running Solitaire as well. So we'll go and click on Start, and we'll open up Games. And notice here that the solitaire icon has changed with this big red circle over it indicating that it's been blocked. So we'll try and run it anyway. And as you can see, Jack can't run it and he's been shown the block message you see here. All right. Also, as another test here, let's go and click on start. And we'll open up Jack's folder. And then we'll go to the videos folder. We'll select sample videos. Okay, and we'll just run this for a couple of seconds. All right, we've got a little bit of data here, so we can close this now. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to switch back to our administrator account. Okay, well, I've just logged back on to this computer as the administrator, so we'll go back to Jack's account. And now we'll click on View Activity Reports, and we'll go and see what Jack has been up to. All right, well, here we can see a quick overview of the 10 most popular sites that Jack has visited and the ones that have been blocked. Now, we didn't actually do any file downloads, so that's blank here. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see the number of times that Jack has logged onto the computer and as well as the application and games he's played, if any. Now, as far as email and instant messaging goes, we didn't run any of those applications, so there isn't any data available, but down the bottom here, we can see that Jack did run the Bear movie. Now, obviously, this front page here just gives you an overview of what Jack has been up to, but up here on the left-hand side of this report, if we expand Jack's account activity, and we'll expand web browsing, in here, you'll see a complete listing of each site that Jack visited and ones that were blocked and so on. So here is where you'll look for a total picture of what Jack has been doing. Now also under the general system folder, you can take a look at changes made to the computer in general. And this won't only cover Jack though. For example, if we take a look at the changes made to settings, you'll see that most of these changes were actually made by me. All right, now the final thing that I should mention in this video is the registry keys that should be of interest. So I'm going to go and click on Start. We'll type in RegEdit and we'll hit Enter. We'll click Continue on our user account control message. Then we'll navigate to HKey Local Machine, Software, Microsoft. 
we'll scroll down and we'll select Windows. And I'm just going to expand this so we can see what's going on a little bit easier. Now we'll expand current version. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see here parental controls. And if we just expand this, you can see we've got several other sub keys here. And of particular interest are our HTTP exemptions. And this lists applications that won't be blocked by the web filter. Now the URL exemption key, if we select this one, in the right hand side, we can see that these three URLs that are being used for digital rights management are explicitly allowed and they also won't be blocked by the web filter. Now this way, the user is still able to view protected content should it need to download a license. Now it's important to add that these two keys that we just looked at themselves are writable as they are designed for programs to be able to update themselves or get a license or activate the product. Now if we expand users, and then we'll expand this SID here. And we'll choose Web and then Overrides. In the right hand side, we can see the allow and block list that we created for this user, which in this case obviously is Jack. Now the value of 1 over here is to allow the URL and the value of 2 is set to deny it. Okay, well the next two options we have here are win HTTP exemptions and win URL exemptions, which will also prevent the web filter from blocking applications and the URLs listed here. Now unlike these other two keys that we looked at which were writable, these two keys are not writable as they're required for Windows functionality and as such they should never be changed. Okay, so there you have the parental controls of Windows Vista, which in my opinion are better than most dedicated third-party applications that attempt to do the same thing. Now, it's really easy to use, and best of all, it just works. And perhaps with that one exception of being able to block all programs from running, apart from the ones I chose, this parental feature is just about perfect. And I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of parents that will probably want to purchase Vista for this feature alone. So in this video, we've seen the parental controls in action. If you're at all concerned about what your young child is up to whilst on your computer, you might want to come in here and take a look at what these controls have to offer. Computers are fun. Well, at least they should be. And as parents, we all want our kids to have fun whilst learning on the computer, but to do so in an environment that's not only safe for them, but safe for the computer. By being able to restrict access to otherwise unsuitable material, or preventing kids or even other adults from downloading infected files, I reckon this parental control application deserves a big thumbs up.